The first game of the Western Conference Finals is done. And today I want to talk about three things that I observed in the way that the Edmonton Oilers played. Hi, I'm Gio. I am a professional sportscaster and welcome to my channel where we talk about all things Pacific hockey. Let's go. The first thing that I want to talk about is Edmonton's defense, because let's be real, it was struggling. This was especially clear in the first period, I feel, where Edmonton just seemed to struggle to keep up with a lot of the Avalanche's attack, even though there were two situations where they were two versus one. In general, there was a lot of space that was left open for the abs with way less pressure being applied onto them than the abs were applying onto Edmonton in return when they were in the reverse situation. And I definitely want to roll goaltending into this because Mike Smith was having a decent game at the very start, but that went downhill quite fast. And actually he ended up with a save percentage of 0.760, which is not great. I mean, compare this to his overall save percentage for the season of 0.915, and you can see a very big difference. This did improve quite a bit when Koskinen was brought out. He actually saved 20 out of the 21 shots that were taken onto him. And that definitely leads me to wonder, are they gonna be playing Koskinen a little more in the games that are yet to come? Or is this gonna be very similar to the first game that they had against Calgary in the Battle of Alberta, that 9-6, where yes, everybody was blaming Mike Smith for a lot of what happened, but he was still used as the primary goaltender after that. And of course, Edmonton ended up winning the series. My second major observation is that Edmonton mostly used their fourth line in this game. Typically, the Oilers will prioritize their first line, which currently comprises McDavid, Kane, and Dreisaitl. But actually in this game, their most used line was their fourth line, which is Cassian, Ryan, and Archibald. Now, I haven't seen any really, you know, hard and fast analysis on this, but I assume that it was an attempt to combat the really aggressive and speedy first line of Colorado, which actually took up 29.8% of their game time. It's really clear that when Colorado were getting breakaways, the Edmonton fourth line were just struggling to keep up with those forwards from the Avalanche. And it meant that a lot of the play that was happening in the Edmonton defensive zone ended up being very reactionary. My third major observation is that really, only McDavid and Dreisaitl looked particularly coordinated in the way that we usually expect from this team. Something about the synergy within this team just seemed kind of off in this game. We saw a lot of botched passes, people not necessarily being able to connect things like assists. And it was only when McDavid and Dreisaitl were on the ice that we actually seemed to see any kind of clean synergy in the way that we usually do from Edmonton. All six goals that the Oilers scored in this game were done by different players, which suggests that a lot of it was, you know, from opportunistic shots. However, McDavid and Dreisaitl were the only two players to get more than one assist each in this game. Ultimately, this game was a bit of a mess. It was entertaining, but it was a mess nonetheless. I think that the Avalanche are going to give the Oilers a really, really hard time in this conference finals. I think that's what a lot of people are expecting, but I am probably going to be anticipating a, a slight change in strategy for the Oilers in their upcoming game. I don't know if relying on their fourth line so heavily is going to be the answer, and I think that they are going to have to be more aggressive with a lot of their gameplay, have more aggressive back checking, for example, if they're going to put up a, a successful fight against the really, really fast offense that comes out of the avalanche, and their defense definitely needs to look more coordinated. That said, as we know, the Battle of Alberta started off pretty miserably for Edmonton, um, and it actually was a worse scoreline at 9-6. Edmonton managed to bring it back and it was only really once they got onto home ice that we started to see them pick things up. So it could be a similar thing here. I just don't know if Colorado are going to be as forgiving a team or if they're always going to remain, you know, one step ahead. Either way, I'm excited to see what the rest of the series looks like. And yes... Even as somebody who is rooting for Edmonton in this series, I will say that goal was onside. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about this series so far down below. What do you think were some of the problems with Edmonton? And hopefully we're going to have an entertaining series regardless of which team wins. But I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. It was really clear when Colorado were getting breaker rate. Oh my God, I can't speak. It was really clear when Colorado were getting breaker rate. Break aways, break aways. They were getting break aways. <laughs> what?